walked away moments ago, that was a mere formality. It wasn't just something symbolic. Something is changing here today. You have a new responsibility, Cody, a responsibility that you've never had before. This is your bride. You are to love her, the point, the absolute self-sacrifice for her. Your love to her has no end. You are her provider and her protector. And Sarah, she looks to you, to you and one another, but together you need to look towards God, being your provider, and also he is your protector. Sarah, I want to say to you today, this is your husband. No one has forced you to be here. Is that right? <laughs> you are joyfully to submit to him, to trust him, to follow his leadership. You are making a choice today that Cody will be your provider and that Cody will be your protector. And you are to love him through submitting to his leadership, supporting him, and caring for him. And through being the compliment that God has provided to be for him, I would remind you today as well, when your father walked away, something really today has changed. As you look to one another, Cody, this is your bride. Sarah, this is your husband. Hear and hear the words of Ephesians chapter 5. Wives, submit. Submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Jesus, so let their wives be subject to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Jesus also loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word of God, that he might present to her himself a glorious church. So husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Sarah, you are beautifully adorned today as a bride. May it, may it remind you the reality that the Lord Jesus Christ has closed his church. He has adorned her in the robes of righteousness. The bride of Christ has nothing but filthy rags, but she is now clothed for forever with glorious robes of righteousness. When you deal with one another in all your weaknesses and all your struggles, may you remember that you yourself are needy of grace, and may you show one another grace also. The difficulties you may face in marriage are no reason ever to walk away. The more difficult it gets, the more opportunity that you both have to show love back towards one another. Remember that Christ died for the ungodly, and the commitment that you make here today is regardless of whether the other person holds up their end of the commitment. Cody and Sarah, be content with what you have. I want you to know that through all your weaknesses, Jesus Christ is perfectly content with you. His love for you is unending. Be content with one another and do for not forsake one another. For the Lord Jesus Christ will never forsake you. Finally, let me remind you that in choosing each other, you are choosing never to pursue any other. You are uniquely God's gift to one another. He has brought you together to become one flesh, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Would you join hands? We will now take the vows. And just for all of us to know, a vow is even greater than a promise because a vow is something that we do, not only to one another, but unto God. The vow is very important. At this time, Cody, would you repeat after me? Sarah, I take you to be my best friend, my faithful partner, and my one true love. I promise before God and these witnesses, before God and these witnesses, to encourage you and to inspire you and to love you truly. 
through good times and bad, in sickness and in health, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, to love and to cherish, till death do us part, to love you unconditionally, and most importantly, to put God in the center of our marriage. Sarah, would you repeat after me? Cody, I take you to be my best friend, my faithful partner, my one true love. I promise before God and these witnesses to encourage you and to inspire you and to love you truly through good times and bad, in sickness and in health, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, to love and to cherish till death do us part, to love you unconditionally, and most important, to put God in the center of our marriage. Cody, I want you to tell you something as a man that's been married for a little bit. When you put this ring on her finger, it changes. It changes the way you look at her. This is your wife. She'll always be your wife. You love her unconditionally, like it says in, in 1 Corinthians. And may these rings remind both of you of that great love that Jesus shed for us. Cody, repeat after me. On this day that God has made... I marry my best friend, the one who shares my life, my love, and my dreams. Sarah, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and devotion. I offer you my heart, my hand, and my love. I join my life with yours to cherish and protect you as my wife. With all that I am, with all that I have, I honor you as my husband. As my wife, I'm sorry. <laughs> Forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sarah, can I grab your name? Toby. Sarah, repeat after me. Cody, on this day that God has made, I marry my best friend, the one who shares my life, my love, and my dreams. Cody, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and devotion. I offer you my heart, my hand, and my love. I join my life with yours to cherish and protect you as my husband. With all that I am, with all that I have, I honor you as my husband forevermore. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, the couple has decided that they would like to uh, go back here to this little table and they're going to do there's some, a unity sand and what it is, it's Corey's, Cody's life and Sarah's life Let the sand fall through our hands Let us never be apart Joining up to separate
Am I on now? Can you hear me? Okay. Can you say hallelujah? We're almost done. Hey, we have to have fun at weddings. Amen? That's what weddings are about. Well, I just want to present to you for the very, very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Cody Wiles. Cody, what do you think I'm going to say next? What do you think I'm going to say next, Cody? Kiss the bride. That's right, brother. Kiss the bride. Let's hear it, folks. Okay, real quick, I just want to let you guys know before I have to walk down the aisle, this is a real quick announcement. The couple is going to be taking some pictures. They want you to be able to go back to the reception area, which is back over here. There's going to be some games and things that are going to be back there. And then dinner will be said, uh, the prayer will be said at 545. So we will make sure you all return at 545 and, and go over there, whatever you whatever you like to do. We're just so blessed to have you here. Let's hear it from Mr. and Mrs. Cody Wiles as they walk down the aisle here.